When you are headed abroad, a passport wallet is something to consider buying. In this video, I'll share a few drastically different options. But first, most of my trips span multiple countries. So beyond my passport, I need to store backup cash in several currencies. I visit Tokyo, Taipei, and Jakarta very frequently, so I have each of those cities' transit cards to keep as well. I show you all this because one of my biggest worries in uploading product-related videos is that some of you fine folks might make knee-jerk purchases when your real-life needs are completely different than mine. So, step one, in the case of passport wallets, is to assess everything you need for your own travels. Right off the bat, with the budget option, I believe that if you are a less frequent traveler, a traditional passport wallet may not even be the best option and you may be better served with a money belt. Hear me out. This one by Alpha Keeper is great because as you can see, the waistband can tuck into this pocket against the back. So even if you don't want to wear it on your body, it stores nice and flat, much like a traditional passport wallet would, without the fuss of the waistband strap getting tangled with other stuff that you pack. I think this is a wonderful option as an all-in-one solution if you are going to one single destination country, and here is why. Opening up the main compartment, we can see two mesh pockets against the back. One of them is a perfect size for a passport, while the other is perfect for multiple cards, so if you have a travel insurance policy, this would be a great place. The rest of the main compartment is of course perfect to store cash bills, and any coins can go into the front main compartment for easy fiddling. If you are staying at a hotel or Airbnb that uses physical keys instead of a key card, this anchor loop on the front can be paired with my favorite budget EDC accessory of all time, the S Beaner by Night Eyes in their number 4 size, where you can quickly attach and remove any physical keys. Coming in at about $25, I think it's a fantastic choice, especially if you're going somewhere that's known for pickpockets as well, to strap the whole setup around your waist underneath your shirt. And like everything else in this video, I have linked it down in the description in case you want to check it out for yourself. Moving up a few dollars to about 35 bucks, we have this awesome option, especially for organization freaks that love to overplan. This passport case by Muji is definitely quite large, but the footprint is justified. Check it out. Popping it open, we can see the organization options. For dual citizens or couples, there are two passport slots, and perfect timing since my cousin is visiting from Taiwan so I can borrow her passport to demonstrate. There's a pen loop over here, and if you're a seasoned traveler, you already know how useful it is to have a pen, especially for filling out customs forms and arrivals cards. This largest pocket at the back of the left side is great for your boarding pass. Moving on to the right side, there are five generous card slots. So, like I showed earlier, my transit cards for Tokyo, Taipei, and Jakarta can get stored here, an airline loyalty card, and my travel insurance policy card can all go in these card slots. Behind those card slots are a full height zipper pocket as well as a full height sleeve behind that. If you are the type of person who prefers printing things out like hotel booking confirmations, as you can see, regular printer paper folded in thirds can tuck in the back, while small items like coins and a SIM card tool can go into the zipper compartment. But you might be wondering what these binder clips are for, and this Muji piece comes with three clear zip pockets, with the option to buy additional packs of three. These are fantastic for two different use cases. One, if you're like me and typically need to have multiple currencies for one single trip, you can compartmentalize them easily. US dollars, Japanese yen, Indonesian rupiah, euros, Taiwan dollars, Philippine pesos, all clearly separated. The other potential use case is for your own budgeting. Maybe you will be in Bali for five days, so using five of these clear pockets to store your daily budget in each keeps your own plan spending in check. Shooting up to the high-end option, we've got the version 2 of the Bellroy Travel Folio. Perfect for business travelers to really complete the look and feel of doing business, this very premium leather piece opens up to reveal two sides. The top layer on the left side features six card slots, so for me, more than enough to accommodate those local transit cards and travel insurance card. Lifting up that front left side, we've got a hidden card slot as well as these two tiny pockets. One for your home nano SIM card if you swap out to a local SIM, and the other for an iPhone SIM card tool. With this wide opening, the main area on the left side is perfect for cash bills. On the front of the right hand side is of course where your passport goes, and the sleeve behind it fits another passport. So again, for dual citizens and couples, a great option. You'll see this little notch here, and that's because all of Bellroy's passport wallets ship with this micro pen. So if you're not the type who typically has a pen on you, this is such a thoughtful touch. But me, personally, what do I actually use in my travels? When I'm sailing the skies, I use this Bellroy travel wallet. Why this and not their travel folio? A few reasons. 
One, I like that it has two slots for bills. So if I'm going to multiple countries, the backup cash of the country I'm currently in goes in the front, while the remaining currencies go in the back for easy compartmentalization based on where I am. What I like the most about it is that it's the most compact option that serves my personal needs, which is super important because every cubic inch I can save supports my preference of being a one-bag traveler. Both this and the travel folio are linked down in the description below if you want to compare even more detailed specs for yourself. After all, what works specifically for me and my travel preferences may not work for you. I gotta sorta of come clean with you though. I do also use that Muji one. Not when I'm actually traveling, but for storing all my travel-related things at home. I have kept this blue one in my drawer at home since 2013 or 2014. When I return home from abroad, I take all the remaining foreign cash and organize them in these clear pockets, put my entire Bellroy travel wallet in it as well, then zip it up and put it away with the confidence that all things travel related are together in one single point of truth in my room. Whether you think it's suitable for home organization or as your actual main passport wallet, I would like to give this brand new one to one of you. What's more, I am headed to Europe in about a week, and one place I definitely hope to visit in Switzerland is the Victorinox flagship store in Zurich. No promises, but if my schedule aligns and I'm able to make it there, beyond this Muji passport case, I will also get an extra customized engraved gift from the Victorinox store for the winner. Because I'm leaving so soon, the entry deadline is very short on this one. I am about to tell you how to enter, but first, a passport wallet is just one of the many things you may consider to include in your travel kit. And if you'd like to see my complete travel EDC, you will definitely want to watch this video right up here. If you're feeling lucky though, this video down here is the one for you. I'll leave them both on screen for a few seconds so you can choose which one to watch. But while you're deciding, consider liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so you'll be notified the moment new videos just like this one drop. And finally, to see how to enter the giveaway, click the entry guidelines link down in the description.